Well, hello and welcome back to the channel. Out here by this babbling brook. Now, this is actually the San Gabriel River in Georgetown, Texas. And we got some lovely little trails. This is just a small little bit of single track. You can see it going back up through there. And then on that way. And basically, there's a concrete trail right up there on the other side of the tree line. So this is just a short little, I don't know, quarter mile section that parallels it. And then there's other little sections of trail. There's some really nice uh, single track. If you're familiar with Georgetown, our big park in the middle of town is St. Gabriel Park. And there's uh, some trails that are built by the Georgetown Trail Foundation. One of them is called Katie Crossing. And you can look it up on uh, georgetowntrails.org org so if you're in the central texas area and you haven't checked that out check it out so what we're looking at today is my latest upgrade on the decathlon rock rider st 530s and that is a dnm aoy 36 rc oh it's not focus there we go a i don't know if it's an o or a zero <laughs> aoy 36 rebound which that little red knob up in there a little hard to get to but you can get your finger down through there and, and flick it uh, from one side or the other to uh, update the rebound damage. It does have a lockout lever right there and then you got your positive air and negative air chamber and I got this for $75 off of eBay. Uh, the only problem with it so this this bike has a 190 millimeter eye-to-eye -eye length and this came out of the box 200 millimeters which they do make both a 190 and a 200 millimeter shock so I think the seller was just mistaken I'm not sure interestingly enough after I've installed it put some air in it ridden it a little bit it seems like it's settled down I don't know if that's possible why it would do that but it's about 195 millimeters but I measured the change in the bike's height like the bottom bracket height which is basically the center of the crank is where I was measuring from it only changed it by a quarter of an inch that's seven millimeters six millimeters so that's only going to change the head angle about a half a degree if that much so not big deal hey that's what happens when you put your bike in a precarious position anyway but yeah, change the head tube angle maybe half a degree. Not a big deal. But uh, out riding it around, checking it out this rear shock, see what I think. And so far, I think I like it. The coil shock was a little more plush. Definitely more plush. That's the tendency of coil shocks to be that way. But this one doesn't make any of the weird clunking noise that the other one did. So that's nice. And I'm able to lock it out and also change the rebound damping, which is nice. So now I'm looking at the front fork because before the the original coil shock and that and this coil sprung fork here pretty well matched and they feel a little bit out of sync now and that's not really that surprising so I think it's probably going to be inevitable that I end up upgrading the front fork. I'm trying to decide whether to go with a tapered fork with this bike you can do that but you do have to switch to an external bearing lower cup so that adds a little bit of stack height to the front end and a little bit of extra axle to crown distance which in this case might not be a bad thing because I've raised the bottom bracket a little bit but a tapered fork is going to come with some sort of through axle hub and that would require me to get a different front wheel, which I don't really want to do because that's just extra cost. There is a pretty nice straight steer, quick release axle fork, same travel as this I'm thinking about getting. And if the bike needs to have some adjustments made to the geometry by increasing the axle to crown distance, I can still get an exter external bearing cup for the lower part of the headset that works with a straight steer fork. 
and that would be one way to restore the original geometry of the bike if it ends up being altered that much by the fork. I'm just going to have to do some measurements on the axle to crown length of this fork versus whatever I end up replacing it with. So there we go. So, so far we are um, rocking right, right along here, I'm about eight and a half miles in on my ride today. Kind of taking it easy, it's a little damp out. I don't want to tear the trails up and it's just a little bit slicker than it normally is. But I've done a few uh, group rides on this bike, or a couple group rides, I should say, and it's holding up really well. And I mean, keeping up with the other riders that are on much nicer bikes. So it definitely is, uh, it's impressive for as cheap as it is. Unfortunately, these are now sold out. You may have seen my community post. So, uh, if not, the place where these were on sale for $216, it was popular. There's a, uh, there's a reason why they sold so quickly. They were very, very inexpensive. So, that is why they are no longer available. So, there you go. I am going to sign off. Just wanted to give a short little update on the DNM Air Shock. There's a bunch of others I was looking at too, but this seemed like the best value, bang for the buck, and went with that one. So there we go. So far, so good. And uh, catch on the next update. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. You know all that stuff. And have a nice one.